Let's plot the bending moment along the beam, which is a very important quantity. Um, and so once we have the, the bending stress, we can, you know, ANSYS will derive the bending moment from that uh, because once you have the bending stress, you know, you can integrate over the cross section to find out what the moment is. And if you do this process, you can show that the bending moment is proportional to the second derivative of the um, the midline, the deformed midline. Okay. So go go to answers. And before I, I plot the um, the bending moment, let me note in passing um, that if I go to total deformation and I exaggerate, you know, if I go to five times order scale, I should say that you know I notice that the cross section itself it you know it shows that it's not rotated so that seems to you know agree with the boundary condition so some parts of the visualization seem to be okay and other parts are not in here too I think that rotation song seems to make sense uh, okay so that was just in passing and I will go to I'll turn off the um, the deformation and I'll highlight um, solution. And um, in fact, what let's uh, you know instead of plotting it along the um, the geometry, let's plot it along what's called a path. So we'll draw a line starting from here to here, and and plot the bending moment along that line. So I'll highlight model in the tree, select construction geometry, and then path. And let me rename the path, right click and rename it to midline. Turn off the caps lock. Okay. And then say path type. So this you have to do again for 1D models. Um, usually you do two points, but here you have to say edge and you have to select the beam. So go to edge selection filter, select the beam and click apply. And now you can plot um, the bending moment along that line. So highlight solution in the tree and say beam results, bending moment. And I can plot this along the geometry, but instead of that, I'll plot it along the path and I, because I can export the values, which I'll show in a minute. Okay, and our, we have only one path defined, the midline and the, okay, so here, for bending moment, you have to be very careful about the direction. And I have seen this, you know, students tripping up on this. So let's do directional bending moment. And the direction is interpreted in the solution coordinate system, okay? Because that is a local coordinate system. And again, you know, with these beam models, you have to be very careful about the coordinate system, you know, whether it's interpreted in the global or the local. And a lot of things are interpreted in the local. So to see the local, what you have to do is you have to go to coordinate systems and um, you know select element triads and uh, so go to directional bending moment actually let's let's do this let me um, say evaluate all results okay and then go to element triads by the way I get this warning here and if I double click on that it says blah 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 um, is on a line is on elements that may contain internal nodes and we checked that you know our um, element has only two nodes at the end, so we can ignore that warning, and uh, I will get rid of the warning. Okay, um, and let me turn off cross section or thick shells and beams. Um, and when I highlight element triads for each element, it'll show me the local coordinate system. Okay, it's centered at the center of the of the element. And so X is red, okay, so that's X. Um, y should be green, and here I don't see any green. Um, and I think that's because I have the, um, you know, my, it's a problem with my, the graphics card I have on this machine. It's, it's an ancient machine. Um, so let me annotate that. Um, so the local, so that's the local X, and I think this is the local Y. Um, and that's a local Z. 
And so the, the bending moment we want in the local Z, so I go to directional bending moment. In fact, you see this is zero. In fact, that's a, that's a good check that uh, theta, you know, this is related to theta, uh, should be related to theta y, and that's equal to zero. Th all those additional degrees of freedom that answer is putting in uh, are zero, and so in the other direction, the bending moment is zero. Um, so let me change this to z. And then evaluate all results. Okay, and I will change the units back to metric. So this is in Newton meters, and I'll say look along Z. And if I go to, and so it's, it's showing me the values along the path, okay, and that matches with what I expect. So that should be equal to um, my load. 8,000 times the the distance 4. So that distance is 4. Um, by the way, you know, you have to be careful about the sign, the sign convention. I'm not going to worry about it over here, but you know, as as you get in deeper, that's something you might have to, to worry about. Okay, but the value definitely makes sense. And then if I go to, I can look at graph, okay, so it's a linear variation, which if I expand this, okay, that's a linear variation as expected, and tabular data, it gives me, um, you know, the values. And this I can actually say export and export it to Excel. And then you can do further processing in Excel and so on. So that's why the path is, um, is very useful. So let me minimize that, minimize that. Um, and similarly, you know, you can go in and plot the the shear force, which I'm not going to do over here, keeping in mind that you have to differentiate the moment once to get the shear force, and so that's going to be uh, proportional to the third derivative of the, the equation for the neutral axis, and save your project.